So our next speaker is Ryan Donovan. Despite the fact that he is a lawyer, he actually is a pretty good guy. <laughs> Ryan recently joined the Platt, Platt River Power Authority where he works on water rights and environmental law. And tonight he'll share an alternative approach to water sharing that has shown promise in other parts of our state. So please help me welcome Ryan. Thank you, Chris. Can everybody hear me okay? Well, in true lawyer style, I felt compelled to start with some fine print, and that is a disclaimer. Uh, simply, the viewpoints expressed by me tonight should not be attributed to my employer, Platte River Power Authority, nor its board of directors. And usually I would follow that up by saying that I accept full responsibility for what I say. But in this case, I can't credibly do that because the ideas that I'm going to present aren't solely my own. In fact, they are part of a much larger discussion that we have been having around the state about water supply and water planning. In fact, there are people in this room that have contributed significantly to that discussion. And I will get to those in just a second, but first, I would like to thank the University Connections for hosting this great event. And thank you for showing up. It doesn't do a whole lot of good to have a forum when nobody shows up, so thank you for being here. I am a longtime resident of the city of Fort Collins, and I love this city. And one of the things that I love the most is that we are a city of doers, we are innovators, as we just heard, and in many ways we are a model city for other uh, towns and cities around the West. In the last few weeks we've come together and talked about our history, our health, our secret sauce. And the answer for me tonight, or the question for me tonight that I hope to answer is, what does water have to do with all of these things? And in a word, everything. In fact, I think the most dangerous thing that we as a community can do is fail to recognize that when we're making decisions about land use and economic development, transportation, housing, we're making decisions about water. And this is really a two-way street. So when we're making decisions about water, we're making decisions about land use and local foods and walkability and economic development. Now, there are some, there's a, there's a growing uh, momentum around uh, better water supply and better water planning. And I'm gonna get there in just a second, but every discussion that I've been involved in around water always starts with population. And I know Elizabeth Gardner was here, uh, our state demographer, a few weeks ago and showed these numbers. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on them except to say that by 2040, we are going to add in Larimer County an additional 156,000 people. Well, at first I was like, that's not that many people. And then I started thinking, or somebody said to me, the current population of the city of Fort Collins is about 155,000 people. So in the next 25 years, we're going to add, in terms of population, another city at Fort Collins to Larimer County. So the question becomes, where do we get the water? The current status of our natural system is that it is over-appropriated. That seems like a pretty lawyerly term, so what does, what does that mean? It simply means that there is more demand than our physical, our natural supply can yield. So if we take the Poudre River, for example, uh, say on average the Poudre River yields 100 acre feet of water per year. Over-appropriated simply means that we uh, have rights on paper to 150 feet, 150 acre feet, 200 acre feet of water per year. So one option to, to get more water is that we don't get more water, right? We conserve. We, we use what we have and we, make, we spread it further. Now, I think the state has done a great job, the city of Fort Collins has done a great job in, in advocating for conservation. The reports that I've seen are indicating that conservation alone is not gonna get us there. So where do we turn? Where do we, where do we get water? We go buy water. We go, we go to the market, we buy water rights. And where do we get, whose water rights do we buy? Generally farmers, we go to farmers and we buy their water rights. Now, to understand this, we have to take a quick 
step back in our state's history about 150 years, and at this time, we were encouraging people to move west, right? Horace Greeley, the city of Greeley's name said, go west, young man, and, and grow up with the country. We were giving away land, 160 acres at a time. We gave it away as long as we farmed. So, of course, we attracted people here, and we were pretty darn good at getting them here, so much that we had disputes about water, even early on in our, in our state's history. And we had to find a way to allocate water. And the system that we came up with back then is the prior appropriations doctrine, or the Colorado doctrine. We often refer to it by its effect, the first in time, first in right. And if you have young children or your siblings, you know this one already. This is the I was here first, I get the full amount. And that's exactly what it is with water. Those appropriators that came early in our state's history and put water to beneficial use, get their, uh, they have the right to have their demands fully met before those that came after. So we fast forward back to the present time. It's 2015. We're a city. We need more water. We turn to farmers because, not because we don't like farmers, but because they have the most senior water rights. And that's, that, that offers one thing, one very valuable thing, and that's certainty. Right? And we as, as taxpayers, we want this. We, we don't want our cities to go out and spend uh, $2 million on water that's not going to yield in a dry year. Right? We, we, we want that senior supply. But this certainty is coming with uh, a dramatic cost. I don't want to get uh, too much into the legalities of it, but to transfer that water from a farm into the city requires that that farmland be dried up. We refer to this as, as buy and dry. And it's, it's sweeping the South Platte Basin. In fact, the, the Colorado Water Conservation Board indicates that by 2050, we in Fort Col here in the South Platte Basin could lose 267,000 acres of irrigated land. That's astonishing. And some of this is due to urbanization, no doubt, but it's being fueled largely by buy and dry. So we have this physical scar on the land, but it's also a land use issue. And we don't need to look very far. We can look to our neighbors down in the Arkansas Basin where they're seeing dust bowls that they haven't seen since the 1930s. It's having huge environmental consequences where the, the most popular crop is tumbleweed. You're seeing invasive weeds growing up everywhere. So those in the water community have begun to ask, is there a better way? Can we start transferring water to communities in a better way to alleviate some of these negative consequences? And one of the ideas that has gained a lot of momentum and has shown promise around the state is referred to as buy and supply. Now, it's easy to get lost in the details of what buy and supply is or what buy and supply should be. It's, it's a relatively new concept, but the main distinguishing factor is that Rather than just buying the water rights and leaving the, f leaving the farm to dry, the city buys the farm and the water rights. So what does this do? Well, it immediately ha gives the city some stake, some destiny over what happens to that land. Right? And, and one option that is working well in the Arkansas Basin is that you put a conservation easement on that farm. And for those that aren't familiar with conservation easements, you're basically selling the, 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 the land, the development rights of that land, to an entity, a land trust, that's going to agree to never develop that land. This could have benefits for local food, right? You keep agriculture local. But you also get to address a lot of those environmental concerns. You can have uh, recharge spots, flood control. You alleviate uh, some of the soil erosion problems that are rampant in the Arkansas Basin. Perhaps the city could be strategic in what farms it chose to enter into these types of agreements with around the city and prevent uh, massive urban sprawl. That's all, all fine and good, but for me it all has to come back to water. So what, what's in it for water, right? This has to be a water supply plan. And you could do something, what you did on the land with the water. For those that aren't familiar in Colorado, we treat water rights very much like real property. So you could put a conservation easement on the water right and say, Mr. and Mrs. Farmer, in most years, you're going to get your full amount of water. But in some years, maybe three out of 10, we the city have a right to come in and interrupt uh, perhaps 50% of your water supply. 
And at a big picture, what this does is it shares the risk and it pulls the risk. You're letting urban users and farmers allocate between themselves how to allocate the risk. And the idea is that you would have a series of these farms around the community from which the city could pull a certain amount of base and dry year water supply. Now, there's no blueprint for what this looks like. And I know for some communities that might be scary, but for Fort Collins, we are a city of leaders and innovators and we're creative. And I'm confident that our city uh, leaders, our community will come together. And I'm not necessarily advocating just for buy and supply. I support buy and supply, but I think that there are other options and we should consider them all. But I would just like to close with one word of caution. I'm hearing in the water community that we are quickly approaching a, a critical point or a tipping point where our ability to do some of these things uh, will be prohibitively expensive. The, the effects of urbanization and buy and drive will be so far down the road that we will not be able to turn the clock back and go to do these things. So my recommendation is that we act uh, deliberately and thoughtfully, but that we also act swiftly. Thank you.